Another quick Tesla fashional, sort of a follow-up to the uh, conversation I had before about the premium streaming that they have available on the car now. Uh, as I talked about, what they want to do is they want to charge you $10 a month more for some very specific things. Those would include the um, streaming uh, music, the uh, streaming TV, uh, and um, the ability to uh, see the uh, satellite maps and the real-time traffic. Now, the as far as the uh, real-time traffic, that's actually still available in the uh, in the app itself on the car, um, and that's when you do the routing, it actually takes that into account when you're doing the routing. But it doesn't visualize it for you, and what you get is the visual cue on what it looks like. And I'll show you that in just a minute, what it looks like. Um, as far as the maps go, that's something that I really would like to have on the car. And I would like to have the real-time visual maps, the Google Maps, as opposed to just the, uh, the maps that show you the uh, directions and sort of where you're going. It's kind of a neat feature, but it's n kind of not worth $10 a month to me. As far as the other stuff that I'm going to have, uh, that I would have if I, if I paid the $10 a month, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my phone with the Wi-Fi hotspot. What I decided is I'm using um, T-Mobile as my carrier, and T-Mobile gives you this deal. If you spend, uh, if you use under two gig a month, they give you a $10 credit um, towards your towards your bill. So they're basically trying to encourage you to use less data. So uh, it happens that three or four times a year I go over the two gig, so I wind up spending the extra 10 bucks anyway. So rather than always spending 10 bucks a month. Uh, on the Tesla, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, use the uh, use the Wi-Fi hotspot, and sometimes go over the ten, the two gig and spend the ten dollars. So maybe instead of four months a year, maybe I do it six or eight months a year. So it's still only forty dollars more to me out of my pocket as opposed to one hundred and twenty. It's a trivial trivial amount of money, I know, but the principle is that I'm already spending the money anyway. So why not just go ahead and spend it the way I want to spend it? Now there's a little extra setup work I have to do to be able to connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, and I will show you that at some point in the future, but it's not really a huge amount of work. Um, so in the meantime, uh, I've gone ahead and I've set up the car. They give you the, they're giving us the 30-day free trial of the satellite maps and the, uh, and the uh, navigation, and I've already obviously had the, uh, the, the uh, free trial of the uh, streaming music and so forth. So um, I went ahead and I'm playing around with it, and I just want to see what it looks like because it's kind of fun, and I want to show you what that looks like. Um, so let's, let's take a look at that. It looks like with the uh, Google Maps uh, overlaid on it. And you can see here there's some spots where it's showing you there's some traffic. Um, so you can see the traffic there. Um, the red is a heavy traffic area. The orange is a lighter traffic. But you can see kind of how it works. It's very different when you look at it. And you see it with the uh, with the map on it like this. It's very different than the way it looks when we have just the, uh, the street view. So this is the street view that we typically have. Um, and this is the map view that we have. Um, so it's a very different sort of thing that we look at here. So as we drive along, we'll see how this actually looks as we uh, as we go so into. So as I'm driving along here, you can see how the um, how the road looks. So you see a number of red and orange uh, dots telling you or lines telling you where there's traffic. And I'm actually in an area right now where it's a Saturday afternoon. The traffic is not that heavy at the moment. I'm not going to say there's no traffic, but it's really not that heavy. So as I look around and I'm driving, I don't see the traffic that they're talking about. Um, now, when I was on the interstate on my way over here, there was definitely a red line somewhere along the way, and uh, sure enough, there was traffic in that area, and the, traf the interstate actually stopped. It came to a stop for a moment, um, which was kind of strange, but that's the way it works sometimes. Um, but interesting that it actually detected that and was able to produce information about it. Now, as an alternative, I can still use Waze um, as a means to see tra real, tra real time traffic on my phone. Um, now, I can't have it on the screen. Again, I can't screencast, so I don't see it on the screen. But I can actually see it um, up on the phone if I need it. Um, and if I have a passenger with me, they can be telling me what's going on. Um, so at least there is an alternative to, uh, to actually paying for the service on, uh, on the Tesla itself. One cool thing is how precise this image is of it, that it shows you on the map. So as I'm driving along here, I'm actually in the left lane of traffic. I'm going to switch over to the right lane in a moment here, and you'll see the actual arrow move over to the other lane just to kind of push me over to the, to the right-hand lane. It actually can detect which lane you're in of traffic. That's pretty remarkable, if you ask me. It has everything to do with the autopilot and the fact that autopilot can take care of that, um, can switch lanes for you. But it is really cool when you're driving along and you see it, and it actually shows you which, uh, which lane you're in. I'm going to switch back again just as a matter of course here just to show you how this works, but it's, uh, it's pretty slick. How about that? That's pretty neat. As I drive along here, you can see the traffic that's building up on the interstate. And if I pan back over, I can see the red line on my Tesla showing me where the uh, actual traffic is coming from. 
so it is pretty cool and I'm pretty I'm pretty interested in the whole map thing it's kind of neat I like it I'd like to keep it but it's really not worth it to me for the uh, for the amount of money they're charging just for that I can use my phone to fill in I'm okay with that uh, if I need to see a, an image of a building or a something when I'm driving along um, so that's that's something I still have available now Tesla does not allow you to um, to basically uh, do a screen image from your phone to the Tesla so I can't put it on the big screen but at least I can uh, look at my phone if I need to. If I'm pulling around an intersection or something, I need to know which building, I could always pull off for a moment and go look at my phone and see what it looks like. So that's always an option. Now, as far as the streaming services go and these extra things that Tesla is not now starting to charge for, I think we're seeing the future. Um, I think there's going to be more subscription-based models on cars and things that they're going to be offering, both between Tesla, other companies, all these electronic gadgets and these things that they're going to have in cars, I think they're going to be more subscription based. Right now, you get into a car and let's just use a couple of examples from the real world. If you get into a car and you're buying a car and they have a package they want to sell you, they're spending, you're spending the money up front for whatever that package is, whatever it might be. Um, whether it's a towing package or whether it's the camera package or whatever thing it's going to be or some activist, active safety features, you're paying for that up front. And, um, what we're talking about here instead is actually saying that instead of that, why not pay a subscription fee to it for maps or for whatever else? And I've heard about other car companies doing that, even the OnStar system that they offer through several car companies, that's a subscription service. The uh, Sirius Radio, that's a subscription service. So all of these things are just kind of leading up to more subscription-based services that are gonna be offered through cars. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think there's going to be more, uh, as more technology gets added to the car, there's going to be more options to do more things that are, uh, that are going to uh, cost a little extra money that you'll have to pay something for as a subscription rather than having it automatic. I know um, I was reading about, uh, I think it was Volvo. They were talking about having a new service for actually a, a subscription model for the car itself. Um, so you would actually be leasing the car through a subscription service rather than through uh, rather than through a traditional lease. And I couldn't quite figure out how that worked exactly, but I see where it's all going. It's going to some more subscription-based models where you can make more they can make more money different ways, and you can pick and choose the things you want to have on your car that you like or you don't like or whatever. And I find that kind of fascinating. I find the whole thing really interesting in the way that they've set it up. It's kind of neat um, and very clever. And you know, that's the way the world is, is changing. And that's what we're starting to see now is more of these subscription based things where it's not just about, I go in and I buy the car and that's all I have to it. I, I don't just drive off the showroom floor and then if I want something else, I have to um, go back in and have it installed. That's not necessarily gonna be the case anymore. Um, I was reading something about uh, Chevy talks about their cars that have the cameras that allow you to remove like the trailer behind it. And uh, they actually, as I understand it, all the cars come standard with those cameras. And when you decide to buy that package that you can remove the trailer and other things, you get like, you know, they turn on all nine or 12 cameras or whatever it is, but the cameras are already in the car because they're being constructed that way but you just don't turn them on unless you're paying the fee for it. And I imagine that somewhere down the road, they will probably offer a subscription for it too. Right now it's a package that you add to your car, but I can imagine that they would, they would find a way to do it and go, hey, why don't you try it out, see if you like it, and if you like it, then you can keep it for this amount of money. So, or you, know, you can keep it per month for this amount of money. I can imagine maybe they don't do it, but other companies will do something similar. You can see where it's all building to. If it's already in the car anyway, why not let people subscribe to it and pay something every month rather than having to do uh, whatever. And as cars become more reliable and more efficient, you know, you don't need to take them into the shop as much anymore. So you don't go in to go, I'm gonna go add this feature, or I'm gonna go do this, or I'm gonna, you know, whatever, and they can upsell you while you're there because it doesn't work like that anymore. Some cars, you know, they really, you really take them in like this one, you take them in the shop very infrequently. So it's really not such a big deal uh, when you're dealing with it. You just, uh, you just take it in once in a while when something happens. So it's better that they have the over the air updates because it makes it much easier. I just got an update yesterday, it was about autopilot. I don't have autopilot, so it didn't matter to me, but they also added a few other little things about how the superchargers work and some other things. But overall, I'm like, okay, great. You, you gave me a couple of features that I probably will never use unless I turn on autopilot in the future. But it keeps the software up to date and makes it available to me at any time. Anyway, that's my Tesla Fashional. Hope you enjoy it.